I'm Camille. If you're new to our tutorials, I'm the owner of Broadwick Fibers. We specialize in super chunky, hand-dyed, and felted merino wool yarns. If you've seen some of our tutorials in the past, you know how fun and easy they are to follow, and I'm really excited about today's project. Um, we're actually going to be making this super funky and fun hanging macrame pendant lamp. What you're gonna need for this project is one kilogram of super chunky felted Broadwick yarn. This is a really great and approachable beginning project because you only need one kilogram of yarn as opposed to a blanket, which you might need two to three kilograms for. So if you're kind of nervous to make the financial investment, this is a really good project to start with. If you're not using our yarn, which is amazing and comes in so many beautiful hand dyed colors, but if you're shopping for your yarn somewhere else, uh, what you really want to pay attention to is making sure that you get felted and not coarse spun yarn. Um, we're going to be pulling apart some of the ends and then refelting them back together in the middle of the project. And if you're using a coarse spun yarn, that won't work. Um, and you also want to make sure that you are not using roving for this project. If you don't know the difference between yarn and roving, Roving is just sheep's wool. It's raw sheep's wool that's been combed, so all the fibers face the same direction, but there's nothing else holding them together, and so it's really, really delicate strands. With this particular project, we're going to be pulling a lot of knots, and it'll rip on you if you try to use roving. So you want to make sure not to use roving. You want to use actual yarn, which is really sturdy and durable. We sell our yarns at www.broadwickfibers.com or on our Etsy page. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, other than one kilogram of felted yarn, you are also going to need a needle felting mat and felter tool. I just got these ones off of Amazon. A tad pull 12 foot hanging lamp, which I also purchased on Amazon. And a light bulb. This one's a 40 watt Philips antique bulb and a measuring tape. Um, if you're already like, oh my gosh, I have to buy so many things for this, we sell the kits on our website as well, robotfibers.com. So the first thing that we're going to do is take our yarn and we are going to rip it into 10 foot segments. The reason for this is that when we're working on this pendant lamp, we're going to be working from the base down the cord. and your yarn's gonna get tangled if you try to leave it all in one piece. I found that the easiest length to work with is 10 feet. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is rip our yarn into 10 foot segments. So grab your measuring tape. Go ahead and measure out, that's five feet. And there's 10 feet. Um, you wanna make sure not to cut this, but actually naturally rip it. If you cut it, you won't be able to felt the ends together when you go to add more yarn onto your macrame chain. So you just kind of have to pull it apart. It's pretty durable, so it might take you a few tries. And then rip, like that. I've actually done the rest of my one kilogram hang, so you guys might want to go ahead and hit pause, and I'll meet you back here when you're done. So if you're ready, you're going to grab your first 10 foot strand and you are gonna find the center of it and lay it flat on the table to get started with your first knot. Then you're gonna grab the left side of the yarn, and tuck it under itself to form a loop. Then you're gonna grab the right side and pull it through that loop. So you've got kind of a little pretzel shape going on. Then you're gonna grab the right side again Tuck it underneath the left side of the yarn and pull it through the loop on the right hand side, just like that. And then you're going to tighten it up to form the first knot in your macrame chain. And you want it to be pretty snug, guys, um, so you can fit maybe one or two fingers through. So you might have to mess with it a little bit. So now that we have the initial macrame knot, it's time to go ahead and grab the tadpole cord. So you're going to want to grab the plug end and tuck it up through your top loop. And then the important thing to remember here, guys, is that your right yarn is always going to be your working yarn. And you're going to kind of just pretend like your cord 
is part of your left piece of yarn. So your left yarn is going to be held steady by your left hand and then you're going to work the stitch with the right piece of yarn. And then the other thing to remember is that you're going to flip the piece of macrame back and forth over between every stitch. So let's go ahead and get started with the first stitch together. So your right yarn is your working yarn. You're going to tuck it underneath your left yarn and then you're going to pull it through this top right loop. And then pull down to tighten. And then you're going to flip the macrame over and then you're going to hold it the left yarn and the cord steady in your left hand and you're going to tuck the right piece of working yarn underneath the left and through this last loop on the right hand side that you just created. Tighten it up. Flip. Right piece of yarn is your working yarn always. You're going to hold the cord and the left piece of yarn together, tuck it underneath, and then through this top right hand loop that you just created. And tighten it up. Flip. Hold the cord and the left yarn steady in your left hand. Tuck your right working yarn underneath and through the top right hand loop that you just created. Flip. Right yarn underneath the left and the cord and through the top right hand loop you just made. So you're just kind of going to be working like that now guys, the whole way down the cord. So it's really nice and easy. You're just working the same stitch. The only thing you have to remember is to hold the cord steady with the left piece of yarn and to flip in between each stitch. The reason it's important to flip in between each stitch is so that you're working both sides of the yarn. So even though you're always working from the right side, you're really working the right and the left at the same time by flipping. Right piece of yarn under the left and flip. You can see this really nice macrame chain kind of starting to form. So we're just going to keep working together like that until we reach the end and then I'll show you guys what to do next. If you find your cords getting a little tangled, you can just flip the opposite direction. You don't always have to flip counterclockwise or clockwise. It doesn't matter which way you flip as long as you're flipping. So we're kind of getting to the end of this first 10 foot piece of cord. So the next step is to felt on to the ends. So we're gonna grab two pieces 10 foot cord from our one kilogram hank. We're going to grab our felting mat and felting needle tool. And then to felt the two ends together, you're just going to lay one piece on the bottom and then the other piece right on top. And you're just going to felt them in just like this. One right on top of the other. So I like to just kind of do one end really well and then pull it off and flip it and do the other end so you kind of get the two ends stabilized. And then I come back through and I kind of fold it around itself and do the middle. So you're just kind of reconnecting what you broke to begin with. But like I said, I have tried doing this in one long piece and it is a nightmare. It is much faster and much easier to just detach, disconnect the ends and then reattach them with your felting needle and mat. You'll be saving yourself a lot of headache of trying to figure out how to pull the yarn through and all that good stuff. This is definitely the easiest way to do it. Plus, once the ends are felted together and knotted into them, you really can't tell that there was ever a joint in there to begin with. And 
And this is why it's so important that you're using wool because it felts together really nicely. So we've got the one side. Now we'll go ahead and do the other side. Okay, so now if you have gotten lost in the shuffle and you can't remember which side you're supposed to start on, there is a really easy way to figure it out. Do you see how on this side you've got two loops going into one, two right hand loops going into one left hand loop? That's the side you want to start on. You want each loop to have its own pair, its own partner. So we know that we don't need to do this side because each loop has its own partner. We want to flip this way because this loop doesn't have a partner yet. So we want to hold, I've got a little more yarn now, so you might just have to switch it around. But you want to hold the left working yarn and the cord in your left hand, and you want to take the right working yarn, tuck it underneath, and pull it through. Now you've got two matching sets. So we're just right back from where we were before. Your strands of yarn are going to be a little longer than they were in the beginning, but that's absolutely fine. Just want to make sure that you're working with the right one. So right working yarn, under the left, pull it through the top. And guys, you're literally just going to work like this all the way down the chain until you get to where the light connects into the cord and then I'll show you guys how to finish it off. So we're nearing the end of the macrame chain and it's looking so beautiful. I'm really loving it. I love this white color. Um, I will say that it looks really, really beautiful in the hand dyed yarns as well because you get a little bit of that color variation which adds even more texture. Um, but really, all the colors are great. It's just a really good way to spice up a room. Um, the other thing I was going to say is that even though we're making a lamp here, if you're looking for a cord cover, this is like perfect for that as well. So when you get to your last one to two knots, you want to make them a little bit bigger than normal because you want them to kind of slide right over the top of the light. So you just want to make them kind of loose and generous so they don't get stuck up here. So we've probably got two more. There's one. Over. Perfect. And you might, like I said, want to leave them kind of nice and loose right there. Now to finish off, this line one's the right length, but we probably want to take a little tiny bit off of this end. So I'm just going to rip the end of this off just like we did to separate the 10 foot strands. And then what I like to do is just kind of loop this around one and then kind of hide it back up the top of the cord. Just like that. And then same thing 
with this guy. We'll just do this one on the other side. We're just gonna kind of hide it back up the top. Underneath. Pull down, make sure that it's looking all right. A little ways to go still. And then just like that, you can't even see it. Let's come out a little bit. Pull it back up. And then once we have it the way we like it, we'll secure those. But we just want to make sure that we're looking good down on this end. Let's come back in. So I'm just going to secure this one. On the inside, I'm just picking one of these loops. And I'm just going to lightly needle felt in. Make sure you don't hit the cord you're doing this, guys. So pull it away from, find the cord, pull it away, and then felt in. Just like that. And then hold it up. Kind of scrunch it down. Just like that. And now we're ready to put our light bulb in. So that just screws right in. Like that. Make sure you're only using a 40 watt light bulb, guys, just for safety reasons. And there you have it, guys, our super chunky felted merino wool pendant light. Um, it was so, so much fun making this for you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, remember, you can buy the yarns at broadwickfibers.com or on our Etsy page. And we also sell the whole kit for the pendant light on our website. Thanks for watching.